Good evening, students, and welcome again to the KIPP Through College Jacksonville webinar series. Uh, this week, we have uh, Mr. Ryan Inohosa from South Georgia State College. Uh, he will be speaking with you all this evening um, just to share more about the admissions process um, and, and, and all of the wonderful uh, academic programs and things um, that South Georgia State College has to offer. But before we turn it over to him, um, we just want to go through a few things um, <clears throat> as it pertains to our, our webinar. Uh, so first with webinar etiquette, uh, please keep your microphone on mute at all times. If you have any questions, type them into the chat box and most importantly, be attentive and respectful. Uh, so tonight's agenda, uh, you will meet the KTC team, which most, most of you are familiar with who we are, um, but we will just share with you uh, again who we are and what our responsibilities are um, as a member of the KTC team. We'll talk about the purpose of these webinars that we have been uh, having for going on about six weeks now, um, and then you will hear from uh, Mr. Ryan Inohosa. Um, and then we'll have an opportunity for questions and answers and then some reminders and of course upcoming webinars. So the KTC team um, to the left of you, um, there's Dr. Erin Allman. Um, she's a director of the K KTC program. Um, she provides oversight to myself, uh, Mr. Jeffrey Pierce up there in the middle, as well as Mr. Rashid Williams, um, who is to your far right. Uh, my responsibility is to work with students um, in ninth through 12th grade uh, to assist them with uh, making a decision about what their post-secondary option will be once they graduate from high school. Um, and Mr. Rashid Williams, his responsibility is to help with that transition from high school into whatever that post-secondary option may be, whether that be the military, whether it be the workforce, uh, <clears throat> or whether it be a two-year or a four-year institution. Um, so before you, you see the KTC team, and as always, we're excited to work with each of you and support you um, through your journey. So again, the purpose of these webinars um, is for us to continue to fulfill our commitment to you. Um, I've said it week in and week out. Um, this is a new normal, um, and for some of us, it may have become um, just kind of normal and not necessarily as new anymore. Um, but we wanted to make sure that during this time, during this pandemic, that we continue to support you guys and provide you information about the college admissions process. Um, so again, I will turn it over um, at this time to Mr. Ryan Inohosa. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. He's gonna share his. Um, so again, please be attentive and respectful. If you have any questions, type them in the chat box. Um, and make sure that you keep your microphone on mute at all times. So, Ryan, I'm turning it over to you. Thank you so much. Give me one moment. All right, so it looks like the... I'm so sorry, Mr. Pierce. It looks like the host sharing has been disabled once again. There we go. Let's talk about that. Here we go. If you don't know anything about South Georgia State, we are a smaller junior college located in Douglas, Georgia. I should go ahead and go to our first pane there. Uh, our, our, our main campus is actually located right there uh, in Douglas, uh, Georgia. Do you have any idea where Douglas, uh, in relation to Jacksonville, Florida, it's about two and a half hours northwest of here. Uh, yeah, and then uh, Wake Cross campus, we also have right there in Wake Cross, Georgia. Uh, that's only about two hours from us, uh, also northwest. Uh, so those are our two main campuses. Uh, we actually have uh, a, <clears throat> I'm so sorry. We have a uh, satellite program set up at Valdosta State University as well. Uh, our Georgia Southwestern uh, program I believe is under uh, renovation uh, right now, uh, but uh, we, do, we do still have ties to those two universities in terms of uh, what our programs are offering. Uh, we do have that, uh, the way that those work is that once you get into the entry program, uh, you're gonna be in the, that program for a year. Uh, you'd be taking classes in that 
uh, in, in, on that campus, in their classrooms, uh, with their teachers. You'd be staying in their dorms, uh, working out in their rec centers. Uh, for all intents and purposes, you'd be a Valdosta uh, student, uh, Valdosta State student, uh, but uh, after that first year, uh, but oh, I'm sorry, but all of those credits would be going towards us. And then after that first year, you could go ahead and transfer into uh, South Georgia State. I'm sorry, into Valdosta State. Uh, pretty much no questions asked. So pretty much that first year, you'd be taking all your classes with us. And then after that first year, or once you get to 30 credits, you'd be able to transfer seamlessly pretty much into uh, Valdosta State. Uh, and we do uh, cater to the dual enrollment uh, students. So if you have any questions about dual enrollment, I will do my best to answer those uh, once we finish up here. Uh, about A little bit about us. So we are serving over 2,400 students, 375 different high schools, 11, I'm sorry, 111 different Georgia counties, 18 states, and four foreign countries. We do have those Douglas and Wake Cross. Those are our main campuses still. Uh, this is a pretty much a little bit of a better example of where we're at. See, there's Douglas and there's Wake Cross, and this is the bottom of the state of Georgia. Uh, and there's the Valdosta campus, and there's the Americas campus. Um, yeah. Uh, as far as our entrance requirements, this is uh, the big one. Uh, we're going to be looking at a 2.0 GPA. Uh, and that's across the board. That's for our associates and our bachelor's programs. Uh, we will be asking for a one-time at uh, $20 application fee, as well as your final high school transcripts from your graduate um, from, from your high school of graduation. Uh, if you have any sort of college transcripts from a uh, trade school or maybe a technical school or uh, some kind of community college in the area, feel free to send those as well. Uh, all of those will be going in. Um, uh, we are uh, officially known as an open access institution. So what that means is that as long as you have uh, that 2.0 GPA uh, and as long as you're uh, in good standing and with your merit, you're going to be finishing up, uh, you will be in good shape to get a uh, <coughs> acceptance. Uh, now that means that uh, we aren't looking for just the 2.0. We want you to be doing as much as you can. Uh, please feel free to send our, the test scores as well. Uh, but uh, we do like to give the opportunity to as many students as we can, uh, as many as we, uh, as many as we possibly can. So uh, we are we are very happy to be extending our uh, our I'm sorry our admissions to uh, all students of all different uh, different kinds. So if you want to go ahead, okay. So we're looking at the test scores. Uh, these are SAT scores, A scores. Uh, the SAT scores, the old SAT scores, were going to be 430 in math. I'm um, sorry, 430 in English, 400 in math and a 470 in math for the STEM majors. Uh, the new scores are 24 in reading and a 22 in math and 25 for the STEM. Um, I'm pretty sure that for most of the time we are still going off the old SAT scores with the 430 and the 400. Um, I'm not entirely sure how often we would go off the new SAT scores, but I know those are on there, so uh, just uh, keep those in mind. And as for the SAT scores, we're all looking for a 17 in English and math combined as well as a 20 in math for the STEM majors. Now for the STEM majors, those are the people that are interested in science, technology, education, and mathematics specifically. And for those, uh, the admissions uh, requirements are the same, uh, except for those uh, test scores. We will be asking for those, for those STEM students. Okay. So here is a, a list of, uh, oh, this is actually a partial list of our uh, app, um, pathways as we have added a few uh, this, past, uh, this past semester actually. But uh, if you'll see, that's a good, portion of what we're offering in terms of our associate's degrees. Uh, this next page that we're going to go to is also incomplete to the bachelor's, uh, but we'll get to that in a second. But uh, these are all of our two-year programs. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, we are uh, a two-year, traditionally we're a two-year open access state college, so a lot of our programs will be those two-year programs that a lot of students like to take the two years, uh, transfer out, and then go to another university for those next two years for their bachelor's, master's, PhD. Uh, whatever they're trying to do. Uh, it really depends what you're trying to do uh, in the long run, but uh, we can help you with whatever you're trying to do. Like I said, we got that English, uh, communication, psychology, sociology, uh, biology. We do have the most affordable associates, nurse, uh, associates of Science Nursing program in the state of Georgia. Uh, so we're really proud of that. Uh, but outside of that, we do have the easily an updated list, so uh, fantastic. Uh, so this is actually a full list of everything we're offering in terms of, uh, that's actually not pending anymore, but um, a full list of everything we're offering in terms of bachelor's programs. Now these are the four-year bachelor's programs. Now the way we set this up is that uh, we will put you into one of our two-year programs, and then after those two years, uh, you'll pretty much be graduated into one of these bachelor's programs. Um, they're pretty much the same exact requirements, except for it's going to be a 2.5 GPA requirement for any of these bachelor's programs. Um, 
So we do have that Bachelor of Science in Biological Sciences, that's that nature and ecology. Uh, nature and ecology is more of the sciencey science. If you're trying to do something with Florida wildlife protection, if you were trying to do something with, um, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, anything in, like in uh, nature, uh, like let's say a marine biologist, if you wanted to go out in the ocean, study them. If you wanted to go into the forest, uh, into the drains and study uh, some of the bugs, uh, some just any sort of something like that, that would be right up your alley. Uh, for pre-professional, that's more for your pre-vet tech, pre-dental, pre-med, um, uh, pre-cardiology, radiology, all the ologies really, that's part of the pre-professional track. Um, so uh, very, very good there. Uh, Bachelor's of Science and Management is going to be marketing and, and organizational behavior. Uh, for the marketing, we're really looking more for who's um, going to be building their own brand, uh, their own business, uh, entrepreneurship, heavy emphasis in that, as well as marketing a business, uh, somebody else's business. Uh, organizational behavior is more along the lines of uh, um, managing that business, not necessarily marketing somebody else's business, but uh, managing your own business and managing other people. So if you're going to go into the higher ups, if you're eventually trying to become a CEO, CFO, uh, definitely be a good idea to have some kind of background in organizational behavior. Um, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, uh, that's just a continuation of that Associates in Science in Nursing. Uh, that is that four years in Bachelors of Science. Again, uh, very incredibly affordable, one of the most, uh, one of the most affordable uh, bachelor's programs for science uh, in, in nursing in the state of Georgia. So we're, we're really happy with that. Uh, no sort of wait list. And again, those requirements for these nursing programs are the same, uh, 2.0, 2.5 for the Associates and Bachelors respectively. Uh, so we're really, really proud to be given. Uh, as many students as we can, those opportunities. So, uh, so please look into those if you're interested in nursing. Uh, Bachelor's of Science in Long-Term Healthcare Management. Now, this is just the flip side of the coin of that uh, of that medical field or the uh, nursing. So, if you like uh, the me medical field, uh, if you really want to get into something, uh, but uh, we can't really stand the side of blood, uh, or maybe use just some aspect of the actual doctoring or nursing or something like that that doesn't really appeal to you. Well, you can still get into it. Uh, you can still be part of it with this healthcare management. Uh, you can work in the offices, you can do clerical work, uh, you can shake, uh, shake hands and uh, chat with, you know, people uh, if you wanted to be in, uh, it helps you develop skills if you wanted to be in the marketing side of a hospital or if, uh, some kind of health insurance agency. It's, there's a bunch of different things you could do with it. And uh, it's a brand new program. We're really, really proud to get that, get that rolling here. So uh, we also got the Bachelor's of Science in Elementary and Special Education. I know it says pending approval by the Southern Association of Colleges. Uh, but uh, that is, that was approved and this is all good. This is up and running actually this past semester. Uh, and that's uh, the flagship program, 12 to 15 students, I believe. Um, but uh, they're, they're off and running. It's, uh, it's a wonderful program. Now that is the uh, elementary and special education. You will be getting certifications in elementary and that's K through five. And then for special education, your uh, specialization would be in, or your certification, I'm sorry, would be uh, pre-K through 12. So that's K through five in elementary and uh, pre-K through 12 for special education. Uh, very, very cool program. Uh, we're, we're really happy to have those all up and running. And uh, this is, uh, the, we're not stopping here. We're really hoping to add, I think, two more. Uh, no, no, not, not I think. Uh, by the end of uh, 2022, we wanted to add three more uh, bachelor's programs to this slate. Um, so we're, we're in good shape. Uh, we added uh, these two uh, before the end of last year. So we're, we're, we're in good shape. We're, we're looking good. Uh, as far as living on campus, uh, I know I spoke to Mr. Pierce and I just said uh, I was going to mention this specifically and, and touch on this and elaborate on this as I could. Uh, as far as living on campus, uh, you, you really can't beat this setup. Uh, you have a fully furnished residential suite in your own private room. Uh, as, as far as having a, it is a semi-private bath, but you will have your own room with a locking door uh, that comes furnished with a bed, a side table, a uh, dresser drawer and some chairs and a table over here. I'm sorry, a chair and a table. Uh, you will share this little common area with the two sinks in the bathroom, uh, but you will get your own room. Um, I have to say, uh, this, is, this is huge. Uh, my sister, she went to the University of Florida. Uh, she was in a dorm for the first three years she was there, and she shared uh, uh, the, the dorm with two other people the entire time. And that, uh, that was three beds to one room. And uh, it was, it, she said it was a bit of a nightmare. So this is, this is huge for us, and we're happy to offer this. this that's that resonance right there. Uh, those are all of our RAs, uh, I think it was last year, jumping up and down. Uh, we're really happy to be there. Uh, we do have that uh, semi-private bath, free Wi-Fi. Uh, there was got study halls on the end of each, uh, each wing there. Uh, computer labs on the top up here with uh, internet access and printers, so there's really no reason you shouldn't be doing your work or, your, uh, or printing anything out. 
uh, laundry and vending, free cable, free Wi-Fi throughout, and 24-hour security on campus. Now, it's not 24-hour security in the dorms, but it is on campus. Uh, they will be in there from 8 o'clock at night to 8 a.m. in the morning, posted up in the uh, lobby area, and they'll just be helping check people in and out and just keep an eye on people that are coming in and out because it is a co-ed dorm and it is uh, open to coming in and out at all time of the night. There's no sort of curfew. Uh, so we just like to have them on hand. It just makes, makes everybody feel better about it. And there's convenient parking. Please, 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 uh, if, if you're interested, if you, if you can, please bring your car on very first semester. We want you to be able to get around. I uh, want you to be able to get to the store, get some groceries, uh, get to the doctor, get home, to see somebody who uh, lives across the state. We want you to be able to get there or just down the road. Road, you know, it's, it's big. And I know some other schools, I, they still don't let their freshmen bring on their cars, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure why, because uh, they really do need them. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a really good glimpse of what uh, living on campus is going to look like. As far as affordability, uh, I know this is the kicker for a lot of folks, and uh, we'll do a good job of breaking this down for you. Uh, you don't even need to worry about this down here. Uh, our students here in Florida will be getting the in-state tuition. And uh, that's not just all. The in-state tuition alone is only about this 19, only about 1940. Um, the housing is uh, this 25. That's the biggest piece of it. Um, meals 17, and then the books 450, and that comes out to about 67 per semester. Now, when you compare this again per semester to so some of the bigger uh, state universities, uh, state colleges, I uh, really, really can't compare. I think that Florida State was something like 18, maybe a semester. Uh, possibly even closer to 19. Again, when my sister was at UF, it was upper tens of thousands per semester. So it's uh, it really can't be beat, especially when it's all compact into this nice little number here. Um, with housing, it really, really can't beat it. Uh, there are, um, I think, let me see. Yeah, there, there are some scholarship opportunities. We'll just skip ahead to the scholarship opportunities. I'll go back to that uh, pane here in a second so you guys can see it. But I did want to touch on the scholarship information because even though it is a lot off, and uh, it is uh, a, a much smaller number than the 10,000, and even for most other colleges and universities, it's a smaller number in terms of what you'll be paying. Uh, it, is, it is still a lot, and uh, people do have, uh, you know, all sorts of different situations, and people will need help uh, paying for college anymore. Why wouldn't you? Um, and we will help you out as best we can. This uh, the foundation scholarship is available in Douglas, and the James Dye Foundation is uh, available in Waycross. Uh, now, the Waycross campus is more for those students that are um, that are going to be living in the Waycross area. Uh, if you have family that's living in the Waycross area, you could use their their address as a, as your home base, and you can go to the Waycross campus. But uh, again, that Waycross campus is more for commuters. So if you were planning on attending with us, if you were planning on staying on campus with us, it actually would be the Douglas campus, and that's what you would put on your your applications. And if you were inquiring about it, you just you'd ask about the Douglas campus and the housing there. But uh, we do have the scholarships available. Uh, these can cover anything from $500 all the way up to a full ride. Now, uh, again, that could cover that 67 per semester, which would be closer to about 13 uh, a, a year. But uh, you get that full ride or even $500 per semester. That's, that's, that's a good, good chunk already. Uh, and you can call that number right there. I don't know if you have, uh, if you're able to take a picture. I'll leave it up there for a second and I'll go back to that, uh, the numbers here in a second. I'll just slide back here so you can take another look at that. And this is based on 15 credit hours. Now that 15 credit hours is based on the uh, 15 to finish, with, which is a mandate that was started by, uh, I'm not sure if it was just by the high schools in the area or maybe it was a, a state thing. But the 15 to finish is uh, 15 credit hours uh, per, uh, per semester and that would give you 30 hours uh, a year. And uh, technically that would uh, get you graduated um, but it depends on the program and where you're going and how transfers work, uh, especially for something like us, if you were going to be transferring out, uh, you definitely want to probably get about 16 credit hours per semester. Um, but again, that's, that's when, you, when you register. I just felt like I needed to, uh, to, to, to specify or, or to rather uh, to emphasize that that is based on the 15 to finish uh, and um, it's a little bit different depending on whether or not you plan on transferring. You might need uh, 32 credit hours or 34 credit hours, just depending on what your major is, uh, where you're gonna be transferring to or uh, where you're transferring from. So I'm just gonna go over here to the FERPA form. Uh, this isn't uh, too important right now at the moment, uh, but it would be worth uh, mentioning that uh, anywhere you go, uh, you will have to fill out one of these FERPA forms. Now the FERPA 
but that's just a bunch of legal jargon. I'm not going to go through all that, but it is the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act. Uh, essentially, it just means we need to have this file, uh, we need to have this form on file um, to be able to speak to you about uh, you or, or your, your student, well, not you, but um, we would need this file, this form on file for your parents to be able to speak to us. Uh, they would need to come in. If they were to call us and we had them on the phone, uh, the first thing we would we'd ask is what student you're calling for? And they'd say yada yada. And uh, then we'd be looking up for yada yada if they have this form on file and if that name is on the form. Because if their name is on the form, we can't speak to them. We can only tell them if they're enrolled and if they're going to classes. Uh, that's, that's all we can say. We can't say how they're doing in classes. We can't say where they're at, uh, what classes they're going to. We can just say if they're enrolled and if they're going. That's it. Um, so definitely important that uh, anywhere you go, if you'd like your parents or uh, legal guardians or anybody to be involved or have this access to that kind of information, be sure to uh, put their name on that form. And um, but yeah. And again, this is just uh, more about living on campus. Uh, there's all sorts of different clubs and activities, uh, 20 plus student organizations and activities you can see right there, uh, as well as HNJCAA, Division I athletic teams, uh, that's men's baseball, basketball, swimming and cross country, and that's women's soccer, softball, swimming and cross country. Um, I myself was a swimmer when I was there. It was, uh, it was a wonderful time. I had that built-in friend group, uh, always hung out with them, always did stuff with them. It was a really good time. Uh, outside of that, if you didn't want to do, you know, the Division I athletic teams, there are intramural sports. You can always go in and have a good time. We have intramural basketball. Uh, also have uh, intramural flag football, frisbee. Uh, I'm sorry, ultimate frisbee. So it's just all sorts of stuff. And as far as clubs and activities, um, there's always something going on on campus, some kind of concert, some kind of show. Um, the Glee Club is always putting something on, Jazz Club, Theater Club is always doing something, Film Club is going out filming stuff or showing something they have filmed already. Um, it's just all, it's a lively campus, there's always something going on, something, somebody's jumping, running, <laughs> it, it's crazy. Um, but uh, as far as living on campus, come on down, give us a visit. Please, please, please let us know what we can do to help you because uh, we are here for you and uh, your, your, your journey really does matter to us. And if you, if you want to start with us, uh, please do uh, because we'd love to have you and we'd love to give you the opportunities um, that, you know, some might not get anywhere else. So if we can help you, please schedule a visit that uh, little sgsc.edu backslash visit right there. Uh, you can take a tour of the Douglas Waycross uh, anytime. Uh, like I mentioned, that Waycross campus is uh, more for the commuter campus, but if you did really just want to see it, uh, you could feel free. Um, but uh, that more so that Douglas campus for that for those visits, but please, please, please reach out to us. Uh, I do have my contact information right here and a little picture of them. Uh, but uh, you can feel free to take down that number or take down that, uh, that email address right there if you had any questions specific about um, programs or the school itself, college in general. Um, but uh, as, as far as uh, everything we got offering, that's, that's it. So I can actually open up to some questions if that's possible, uh, Mr. Pierce. Yeah, Ryan, thanks again, man, um, for that for that presentation. I think you covered a lot of a lot of good information um, that would be very beneficial for our students um, so that they know that South Georgia State is a viable option for them. Um, during the presentation, I did see one one question that came in um, and that question was uh, how many years do I have to stay at South Georgia State before I transfer? Um, and is there a GPA requirement to transfer to Valdosta State after that particular time? Very, very, very good question. Uh, good question. Uh, so the GPA requirements for the uh, school that you're trying to get into uh, just really depends on, on, on that school. Um, so if you were trying to transfer into somewhere like um, Georgia Tech, I believe it's 3.2, 3.3 minimum GPA, uh, something like that. Uh, and uh, you would have to meet those requirements uh, to transfer in. And uh, for the Valdosta program, I believe it is also a 2.5. Uh, so I, I, I believe it's a 2.5. I would need to get, let me make sure. I want to make sure I have this information readily available, but I, I am almost positive that it is a 2.5 to be able to transfer into that Valdosta state. And uh, like I said, you could do that after the first year. You could stay in that program for as long as you like right there at that uh, Alma Valdosta state campus. But uh, you can, 
transfer after that first year if you were in that Valdosta State program. Uh, okay. Now, outside of that, if you were just going to take one of the two-year programs at uh, the main campus in Douglas, uh, you could stay there for two years, uh, for two and a half. It, re it really just depends on how, how determined you are, how willing you are, and uh, how many hours, uh, uh, how many credit hours per semester you're, you're taking uh, as to how quickly you get out of there. Okay. Um, I have a, uh, I have a question. I, I guess I have a follow up um, just for clarity. Um, does it matter? I know you said in the presentation, the way cross campus is more so for commuter students. Um, but does it matter which campus they attend to take advantage of the uh, transfer piece with Valdosta State? Or do you guys kind of prefer students come to the Douglas campus? Oh, no, for the, for the Valdosta State um, uh, program, we'll, we'll set you up on the Valdosta State campus. Uh, so they'd be on the Valdosta State campus for that first year, for pretty much their entire college career if they decided to stay at Valdosta State those full four years. Um, but uh, for, for the Valdosta State, we actually have dorms that are set up uh, on the Valdosta State campus that we put our students in and they stay on that campus. And uh, they'd be pretty much a VSU student from day one, except they'd be taking classes through the South Georgia program. Got it, got it. That, I think that's, that's really good, that's really good. Yeah. Uh, so I personally have one more follow-up question. Go ahead. Um, as it relates to um, the scholarships. Um, right. are, those, are those scholarships through the foundation, are they need-based scholarships or are they merit-based scholarships or do they kind of vary? They, it varies and it really depends. Uh, it's a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, we're looking at everything, uh, genetic makeup, uh, cohorts, uh, your background, uh, I guess, extracurriculars as well, and National Honor Society, credit hours, um, I mean, uh, service hours, stuff like that. We're just looking at everything. And uh, um, I, I think that most of the time it does lean more towards need base, but it really, it really depends. Uh, we're awarding people all the time. And uh, honestly, uh, we had some money left over a few years ago. So we're really trying to push the students to, to apply as, as much as possible, because uh, we're, uh, we got money to give away, honestly. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. And one last thing, uh, we had a few people who, who may have just kind of like came in a little late. Uh, even though we're in this, this new normal, you know, some folks still have other obligations. So they, they probably were able to join a little bit later. But can you just kind of like circle back and just kind of like touch on, uh, you know, the housing, the cost? Sure, 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 sure. Give me one moment. Yeah, so uh, one more time, just uh, so we're all clear, uh, this is uh, South Georgia State. We are smaller uh, two-year, four-year programs, uh, smaller two- and four-year school. Uh, we are located right there in Douglas, Georgia. Uh, a good portion of everything we have right here is uh, for the two-year programs, uh, and then uh, everything we have for the four-year programs is right there. But let me go swing back to these two years. Uh, and again, for these two years, um, the students will be taking those two-year programs and transferring out to the college of their choice. As long as they have the credits and the GPA, they can transfer to wherever they like. Uh, we have students and athletes going all over the place. Um, so uh, we're really proud of them. And, 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 and pretty much, I, I know I said that the two years and the 15 to finish, but we've had students that leave after one year and transfer. It really depends on the credits, where they're going, and the GPA. Uh, but like I said uh, a little bit ago, as long as they're willing, uh, there's pretty much uh, nothing they can't do. And uh, once again, these are the bachelors right here, uh, full list. Uh, and a full list of everything is also on the website. Uh, I'll go back to the end. You can probably take down the, uh, the website or I can slip it in the chat here in a second uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is an incomplete list of uh, the associates that we're offering. But uh, this is a complete list of the bachelors um, that, except for that pending approval down there at the bottom. That, that, that shouldn't be there. Apologize for that. Uh, but as for the housing, this, this is what the housing is going to look like. Uh, this is a good diagram of what the dorms themselves, the units will look like. Uh, sorry about that, but uh, they, they do come fully furnished. They got the bed, the side table, uh, the chair and the desk and a set of dresser drawers. Uh, you can't really see them in here, but they are usually under the bed or against the wall over here. Uh, you will share a little semi-private uh, semi bath. They got the two sinks in the bathroom there. Um, but uh, if you know someone that's going to be going there, uh, if you meet somebody at our orientation or if you know somebody that's, you know, just you've met somebody that's going to be going or if you're in contact, uh, you can request to room with them. Uh, they just have to be uh, the same gender. And uh, but outside of then outside of that, there are uh, room preference sheets that you can 
fill out when you're here for orientation. And, uh, and that's how we match you up if you, if you don't know anybody or if you, uh, you don't have an idea of somebody that you're gonna be, gonna be staying with. We try to match you up with somebody uh, that's, uh, that aligns with your taste. You know, if you like it hot or if you sleep in or if you're a uh, night owl, stuff like that. Um, but, uh, but again, this is a good, good, good example of what everything's gonna look like, a uh, good layout. Uh, we are trying to get um, a video, a tour video uh, up on the website here in the next week or so, what, uh, what the school uh, looks like right now, uh, but uh, uh, that's, that's forthcoming. So uh, please be patient with us on that, but uh, that will be, will be up really, really soon. You can get a better idea of what everything looks like on campus. Um, outside of that, I did want to mention before I, I do forget um, the past program. Now, if I can just find some literature for it here, one moment. misinformation here. Uh, the PASS program is our, uh, our summer program. Uh, it's a pretty much a summer cohort. It would act like a, it would act like a summer cohort. It would be a uh, list of, uh, it'd be a series of classes throughout the summer that would be vigorous, uh, rigorous, but uh, would help students that uh, if they were Let's say if they were teetering, uh, maybe they were uh, right between a 0 .0 and a 0 .5, or between a uh, or 0 .1 and 0 .5, 0 .2, or something like. That. Maybe they were trying to bump that up a couple of grades. Maybe they're trying to uh, get a credit or two out of the way, uh, something like that. But uh, let me just make sure I get the right form here. Oh, Is that more of like a like like students can get a a, a head start? Um, on on their college on their college uh, career, yes, very much so. Um, and like if again, like if you were, I, I apologize. I just I no worries. No worries. We um, <laughs> we we're we're recording this, so we'll have it up for replay. Um, and okay. if you want to send that literature to me, we can we can make sure that we get it out to our students so that. They um, more in detail about that particular program. Right, I got you. I did, right. I did see another question come up in our chat from a student, um, and the question is, is it required for you to live on campus once you transfer? Once you transfer? Uh, uh, it depends on the uh, university. Uh, when you live with us in the Douglas campus, we, uh, we do require that at least freshmen stay. Uh, if uh, after that first year they feel like they can manage uh, by themselves, uh, they're free to. But we do require at least freshmen to, to come in and stay with us on campus. So our dorms are usually the most affordable option in the area. Uh, as far as transferring out, depending on where you transfer, uh, if you if they require transfer students to stay on campus for the first year, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I, I haven't heard of that often. I know uh, I transferred to another school. I transferred to Florida Atlantic after the two years in South Georgia, and they they didn't make me stay on campus. Um, so uh, I guess I guess it depends on where you're going uh, and uh, what the university says. Awesome. Um, I don't see any more questions in our chat, uh, but Ryan, I do want to thank you um, again for this presentation. Um, everyone that's on the call, I just want to kind of like just touch that you know South Georgia State College um, can be a viable option for you. Um, it is a two-year institution. Um, but they do have a transfer program with Valdosta State. Um, as you see on the screen, there's Ryan's contact information. Um, it's very affordable um, and they do have scholarships. Um, so again, Ryan, we do thank you for uh, taking time uh, to share this wonderful information with us. Um, and as we, as we see, <clears throat> as we continue to work with our students, um, we will definitely you know, share this information with them. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for allowing me to speak. Once again, uh, Jeffrey, Aaron, Rashida, pleasure to, to, to have you. Thank you. Uh, I know uh, my first time, I apologize if it was a little, uh, a little rusty, uh, but, uh, but thank you so much for allowing me to be part of this. It's, uh, it's a really cool experience. I'm just happy I can help. And uh, uh, one thing before, uh, before I do you know, lose y'all uh, is that uh, our application is going to be free uh, until the uh, month of August. So please uh, get out there and get on it. Good deal. Good deal. Thanks a lot, uh, Ryan. Of course, of course.
so everyone that's still on the call, uh, we're just going to go through a few more slides before we wrap up uh, today's webinar. Um, so just want to touch on a few reminders about our virtual hangout um, and our office hours, which are on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, we are going to drop the link into, into the chat right now for you guys to grab that. Um, so if you, if you want to meet with us, um, just fill out that link um, um, and, and you can choose uh, pretty much what you wanna discuss with us. Um, but just know that on Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, there is time blocked off on our schedules to meet with you guys between two and four uh, or between two and five o'clock. Um, so just keep that in mind and be on the lookout for that um, in the chat box. Uh, also, uh, make sure that you follow us on our different social media platforms. Um, of course, we are on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and we also have a website <clears throat> so that you can, uh, you know, get updates uh, from our website as well. Um, also, we have a YouTube channel um, that is not listed here, um, but we can share that with you guys um, after the webinar. So if there are any webinars that you may, may have missed in the past, um, you can go and uh, on your own time, <clears throat> just look at those, look at the information that was shared uh, from those webinars. Uh, we also will drop into the chat here um, a, a link to a survey. Uh, we'd like you guys to complete this survey uh, about this particular webinar with South Georgia, South Georgia State College. Um, it's important that you guys give us feedback about the information or about the things or the events that we're putting on for you. Um, it just pretty much helps us to get better uh, to make sure that we are meeting you guys' need. Um, so that link has been dropped into the chat. Uh, so just grab that link and make sure um, that you complete that survey and there may be an opportunity for you to win a prize by completing that survey. Um, this is just a reminder for, for juniors. Um, <clears throat> uh, we are doing the giveaway um, for uh, a gift card, a $50, $25, $15, or $10 gift card. Uh, so make sure juniors, you've at least registered for the SAT or ACT, completed your youth science, um, and you finalize your wish list, uh, and you've attended at least one of the webinars and asked a question. Uh, so for those of you um, who are on this, uh, you could get entered into a drawing to win one of these prizes. Um, so this is just a reminder uh, for the juniors that are on the webinar, uh, make sure that you're working towards completing these things so that you can increase your chances of winning one of those four gift cards. Um, upcoming webinars next Thursday uh, at 6 p.m. We will have a virtual info session with the University of North Florida. Um, so if, if that is an institution that you are interested in, um, I think that will be a great time for you to join the web, uh, that particular webinar um, just so that you can learn more about their admissions and their enrollment process. Uh, we will be sending out information about how you can sign up for that. Um, but again, that's next Thursday, uh, same time. Um, and, uh, and that will be with the University of North Florida. Uh, so again, we thank you guys for uh, taking time out of your schedule. We know that everyone is so busy um, this time. You know, I've said it over and over again. It's, it's still very challenging for some of us. Uh, so we thank you guys for taking time to be on the call, be on the webinar, uh, just to learn the information uh, from these different organizations and institutions. Um, so before we leave, just again, remember, grab the link to the office hours if you want to meet with us, um, and also grab the link to the survey to complete that, to give us feedback on how we're doing. Uh, so again, won't take the rest of your Thursday evening. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, as well as your weekend. Take care.